A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launched over 100 satellites into space on a dedicated rideshare mission called Transporter 3. The Falcon 9 rocket was launched on January 13, 2022, from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, and it was the company's second flight of the year with up to 40 more planned over the next 12 months. So how successful was this mission? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, Elon Musk Evolution where we tell you all the latest news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies. In today's video, we are going to talk all about the Transporter 3 mission, and what are SpaceX's future plans about launching numerous small microsatellites and nanosatellites for commercial and government use. If you want to find out more, then stay with us until the end of the video. Also, before we start the video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos. And let's get started. SpaceX established its SmallSat rideshare program nearly two years ago, offering low-cost launches on dedicated Falcon 9 missions too, as well as on launches of its Starlink satellites. It has attracted significant interest from both companies and government agencies. SpaceX recently launched its third mission titled Transporter 3 to launch satellites into the low Earth orbit, and the mission was a huge success, just like the previous two missions. So before we discuss the Transporter 3 mission, Let's first look at the success of previously launched transporter missions. The mission named Transporter 2 by SpaceX was the company's second dedicated small set rideshare mission after the Transporter 1 mission in January. The earlier flight carried 143 satellites, but SpaceX said the total payload mass for Transporter 2 was greater than that of Transporter 1. However, the company did not disclose specific payload mass figures for either mission. The Transporter 2 payload manifest features synthetic aperture radar satellites from three competing companies, Capella, IC, and Umbra. Hawkeye 360 and Kleos, two companies deploying constellations to perform radio frequency tracking, each had satellites on this mission, as did Planet IQ and Spire, which collect GPS radio oculation data for use in weather forecasting. Other commercial customers, including Astrocast and Swarm, which are each developing Internet of Things constellations, and Satellogic, which has a multi-launch agreement with SpaceX for launching its image satellites. SpaceX flew three of its own Starlink satellites on the launch, which joined 10 Starlink satellites launched into polar orbit on Transporter 1. Deployment of the payload of 88 satellites started nearly 58 minutes after liftoff once the upper stage performed a second burn of its engine to place it into a sun-synchronous orbit at an altitude of nearly 550 kilometers. The satellites from a variety of governmental and commercial customers were released over half an hour. Transporter 2 was SpaceX's 20th Falcon 9 mission of the year, with six months yet to go. In only two years has SpaceX conducted more orbital launches, 21 in 2018 and 26 in 2020. A key factor in that high launch cadence is reusability. The Falcon 9 booster used for Transporter 2 was making its eighth flight, concluding with a landing at Cape Canaveral's Landing Zone 1. Its first launch was exactly one year ago, when it launched a GPS-3 satellite and was also used for launching TurkSat 5A and five Starlink missions before Transporter 2. Other Falcon 9 boosters have flown up to 10 times. While SpaceX previously set a goal of 10 flights per booster, company officials have in recent months suggested that those boosters could fly more than 10 times. According to Elon Musk, we've got boosters now that have flown 10 times, and some that are slated to fly 20 or possibly 30 times. Now let's talk about the launch of Transporter 3. The third dedicated mission for the rideshare program called Transporter 3 was launched on the 13th of January, 2022. The mission also launched spacecraft for Kepler, Guardian, ExoLaunch, Nanocracks, Satellogic, and Spaceflight, along with dozens of other payloads. A total of 105 satellites were lofted into a sun-synchronous polar orbit for SpaceX's SmallSat rideshare program. The mission also includes small microsatellites and nanosatellites for commercial as well as government customers. All of the spacecraft were deployed within 90 minutes of liftoff. Transporter 3 was the first ground-based first-stage landing and recovery on Florida's space coast in more than six months, returning to landing zone 1 several miles south of the launch pad. Prospective customers buying directly through SpaceX can currently pay just $1 million to launch up to 200 kilograms to sun-synchronous low-Earth orbit. While rideshare payloads lose out on the benefits of hands-on, the small rockets that offer direct launch services for small satellites are extremely expensive. 
So basically, there's a reason that SpaceX's SmallSat rideshare program has been so successful. In just three transporter launches, the company has delivered almost 300 plus small satellites to orbit for dozens of different customers, including startups, universities, space agencies, student groups, science teams, and more. In addition, to take full advantage of Falcon 9's performance, SpaceX has also launched several Starlink satellites as it has done on both prior transporter missions. Transporter 3 has marked SpaceX's first land landing of a Falcon booster in more than six months and its first truly polar launch of 2022. Three more Falcon 9s, including one net January 24th, are scheduled to launch before the end of the month. Barring schedule delays, Transporter 3 is also the first of up to four dedicated SpaceX rideshare launches this year. Now that we know all about SpaceX's rideshare or transporter missions, let's discuss how the company is planning to launch microsatellites or nanosatellites for military purpose and government use in the near future. So make sure you stick with us until the end of the video. Micro and nanosatellites have emerged as a highly versatile and economical resource for the satellite community, becoming one of the major areas of growth and development. Some of their applications include scientific research, communication, navigation, and mapping power, earth observation, biological experiments, and remote sensing. There is growing utilization of microsatellites for military and defense, as they have been launching these microsatellites to provide communication signals to soldiers stationed in remote locations or dense forests. As military needs for data bandwidth and reliable communication infrastructure, it can be achieved using constellations of nano and microsatellites. The Director of Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, Walker, has stated that it's time to shift future spendings toward building constellations in low Earth orbit made up of hundreds of small satellites. He said, We have been saying this for 10 years. We see a shift to low Earth orbit, get capabilities in larger constellations. So the more satellites that are in the system, the harder it will be for enemies to take them down. Walker further highlighted the larger constellations can be used for several purposes, as they can even enable a battle management system for tactical warfighting on the ground. So the U.S. Army's Space and Missile Defense Command is developing a series of nanosatellites designed to compensate for damage done to larger satellites. Unlike the larger satellites, which are designed to stay in the orbit for decades, the nanosatellites will stay in orbit for months or weeks. So now let's look at how all this is ultimately connected to SpaceX and its future plans. SpaceX has nearly launched more than 2,000 Starlink satellites, with thousands more to come in the following years. The prime mission of these satellites is to provide high-speed internet virtually worldwide, extending it to many remote locations that have lacked reliable service to date. Now, a research funded by the U.S. Army has concluded that the growing mega constellation could have a secondary purpose, and that is doubling as a low-cost, high-accurate, and almost unjammable alternative to GPS. The new methods would use existing Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit to provide near-global navigation services. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Do you think SpaceX is becoming successful with each of its missions? And how successful do you think the company will be in the future? Share with us in the comments below. And thank you for watching.